Hey everyone, I wanted to put together this little tutorial video here on uh, servicing this SL3300. Uh, so this particular unit has two issues uh, that I've found pretty common uh, kind of across all the units or all the SL3300s that I've worked on. Um, and that is sluggish response on the start stop for the tone arm and a sticking repeat. So even when it's on zero, uh, the turntable will still repeat. So I'll just kind of demonstrate that. So start it up. You can see the arm kind of is not responding. And this one's uh, pretty bad here. So I'm not going to wait for, for it to go. And then to demonstrate the slow stop and the stuck repeat, again, repeat is off, we're at zero. So you can see that slow response and then the turntable repeating despite the repeat being turned off. Okay, so the, the culprit here is really just the old grease underneath gumming up and causing some issues. Um, so before we get going on that, remove the head shell, remove the platter, and unplug the unit. Okay, now that all that's done, uh, we got the bottom cover removed as well. Flip her over. Okay, and uh, I'll take us in close here to get a view of the what I am suspecting. So, for the repeat, this spring and white plastic piece here are typically what I've found to cause the repeat issue. Uh, so this is pretty frozen up here. The spring's on it so it should pivot freely and the spring should kind of bounce it back. But as you can see I'm pushing on it and it's just stuck. So this thing is pretty frozen up from the old grease. Uh, so that is usually what I've found to cause the repeat issue. And then for the uh, slow kind of automatic tone arm response, this piece here underneath the plate is typically the issue. There's a kind of grease on the top of it here and it just gets gummed up and does not like to move. So that so this is the end of it, and as the tone arm is moving, this should kind of pull out and move back in. But as you can see, it's really frozen up, and that spring um, underneath, it's not coming through too clearly. So you have this spring on top, which is not what I'm talking about. There's a spring underneath there, right around that tab on this uh, white lever. So we'll have to pull that out, clean it off, clean all the old grease out of there and put some uh, fresh grease in. Okay, uh, so first we will do this piece, the automatic start and stop, or the uh, repeat, I'm sorry. So to get that, we'll need to remove this C-clip uh, kind of remove the spring here so it doesn't go flying. And then once we have that off, we'll be able to pull this whole metal lever out and uh, get at our white piece here. Pull it off. Clean all the old grease and gunk out of there. And then I'll get some fresh grease. Okay, something really important to note is when you're removing these clips, <clears throat> excuse me, 
when you're removing these clips, it's uh, important that you use blue tack or gum or pretty much any sticky putty that you can get your hands on. Because uh, these clips do like to come flying off if you're not using anything to kind of stick it in place. So we're going to remove this clip. Get my little bit of putty here. Now what I'm doing is I'm just prying the clip with the small jewelry screwdriver from the, the post. Okay, so that's off, and we did not lose it. Okay, I'm just going to run and get a little parts container so I don't leave it on the table and knock it off and forget it somewhere. So, Okay, I finally found my little container. Uh, something else, kind of a helpful hint, is if you're while you're working on these, it's great to take pictures everyone's got phones now so snap a ton of pictures and that way when you try to put everything back together you know it's kind of going in the right spot um also helpful resources such as uh, vinylengine.com which have all the user manuals so uh, sometimes those aren't quite as helpful as you'd hope but uh there's resources out there so now we're just going to try and pull this up so here's our spring we just pulled off the end. And then here is our kind of culprit part for the repeat issue. You see how totally frozen it is? Like that spring should be pulling it back. So as it's going over the teeth of the wheel right here, it can kind of snap back and forth as needed. But right now we're even like full bore, that spring is not doing anything because that old grease on this shaft is so frozen up. Okay, again, we got another one of these uh, Eclipse here that we will uh, have to take off. And I just dropped the washer, so don't do what I just did and lose that washer. Uh, that was just a washer that went on top for the, the clip that was up there. Again, let me get my putty. Um, I'll try and do this on screen. My putty and my screwdriver. And again, just pry this clip off. Okay, we got the clip. Put that aside for now. Pull the spring off here. Uh, what's the easiest way? I guess this way. You know what, this might even be easier. Okay, so we're just gonna work, work this off very carefully. Don't pull too hard and send that spring flying. Okay, spring's off. So, you can see kind of the orangish hue on the inside from the, the old grease. And kind of on the post as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go get some isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips and uh, get cleaning the stuff off. Okay, uh, so back with my ISO and Q-tips. So all you gotta do, just give this a good rub down and cleaning.
want all that old grease off before you put the new stuff on. Same thing with the inner diameter of our white plastic piece here. Let me kind of pull some of the fuzz off the Q-tip so it can get get in there better. Okay, then I'll uh, just kind of swab again, make sure everything's off before applying any new grease. Oh, sorry, I realized some of that might have been off camera. Okay, then we get our grease. So I just use this uh, Statalube from CRC uh, lithium grease. It seems to work well. So this is probably a lot too much, but we'll just kind of glob it on there. A little bit on there. Just a hair on the post. And then drop this back on. So you can see now just how how freely it moves compared to before when I was really having enough yank it to get it off the to get it off there okay and again my pictures are so important because now I gotta remember how this uh went on <laughs> Um, so let me think. I think it was this way. Nope. Okay, uh, let me pause and... Okay, uh, crisis averted. Did take some pictures of this piece before I yanked it apart, thankfully. So, it went on like this, and then... Let me just get the spring back on here. Okay, and now look at look at that. Before it was frozen, now we're kind of moving freely here. The springs actually pulling it back into place. It's working very snappily, so so that's good. That should cure our stuck repeat issue. So we'll get that C clip or the E clip back on there so I'm just going to use some needle nose oops, I grabbed the wrong pliers some needle nose pliers And it's good to be careful while doing this because these clips love to just fly away if you're not paying attention. Okay, so that's clipped back on. And we're still moving 
very freely. Okay, so that part is done. Um, I guess while we have it apart, it wouldn't hurt to clean up the post that this whole lever sits on. Uh, it does look like it has some old grease. Uh, it did not feel as as bad as uh, the post with the kind of white grabber there. But it won't hurt to clean it up and give it a fresh coat of grease. You can just see how how dirty that old grease is. Instead of being kind of this orangey color, it's orange with a lot of black. Okay, and just give it a little bit of grease on the, the inside here. Okay, and then we'll put that arm aside because uh, it's gonna have to come be off anyway for us to get out our next piece. Okay, so our next step is going to be getting rid of all this stuff up here to try and get down to our little slidey piece underneath here. So that's going to involve, uh, if I'm remembering correct. Okay, to get started, I'll just pull the screws up from our board here. where I won't lose them. Okay. Uh, next, start removing some of the clips over here. Yeah, I'll move the camera so I don't knock it while I'm doing this. Okay, I'm just looking underneath to see what springs we have when I pull it off so they don't, don't go flying away. Uh, I guess I'll take this one off first. Again, putty and pry. Okay, be careful not to send this spring flying. So this piece can come up. I guess we'll do this one next. spring so I'll make a note that was in this hole here um, I probably have it in my pictures but not a bad thing to note and also on the bottom we have a spring so be careful with that that this part doesn't pull off and 
spring go flying. Clip down. And pull the spring that will <clears throat> attach to that first piece we pulled off. Just so we don't lose that. Okay, take this shield off back here for the <clears throat> RCAs. Okay, uh, now I'll take out the screws on the, the motor plate. Okay, uh, <clears throat> excuse the, the gaff there. Uh, my camera or my phone got the storage got full, so I'm not sure at what point uh, that dropped out. So we removed kind of the white pieces that went on top of here and here. We removed the screws for the board and the screws on the motor plate. Uh, so I did not unhook the, the board and motor. I think that should be able to move out as one piece. And that all in pursuit of getting at this white piece here that's on the underside of the plate. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of flip this over. So that way we can get at our piece here. Uh, you want to be very careful with the wires attached to the board, pull too hard and they will likely come off. Um, and okay, so we have to clear this kind of white piece here underneath this lever here. Uh, you can always remove this lever and then you don't have to worry about it, but I don't really feel like doing that. So we're just going to try it like this first. Okay, so we're out from under the lever. Now to flip it, I believe we have to disconnect this micro switch. I think that this connection pulls out. Or maybe it doesn't. Okay, so I might have uh, fibbed a little bit there. We are going to want to disconnect this motor board from the or the board from the motor. That way, we can actually flip it without worrying about tearing these wires up. And then this just pulls up here. It's got uh, these pin connections. I um, guess it's off camera. Here, let me put this down so I can show you. Okay, so I just got these pin connections which attach in here. So now this can 
kind of move out of the way and now we're free to work with this. Okay, so we'll carefully flip it. I'll make sure, so I thought this micro switch was able to be disconnected, but maybe not. Okay, so here we are, we're on the underside and here's our little sticking piece right here, this, this whole shebang. Okay, um, so to remove this, we we'll want to undo the spring that's attached right here. here. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, so pulling this E clip off. Almost there. Okay, that's that's off. Um, I'm gonna take some pictures of this piece so I remember how it goes back in. Okay, so we'll pull that up and out of the way. We'll try to anyway. Then we should be able to shim this up. Okay, there's a little like T. That's uh, let me show you. There's a little T under here. See that? So you gotta line it up right and pull it up through the the opening underneath in the plate. If it's not lined up, it's just gonna not let you pull it out. Okay, and careful with the spring as well. Okay, so that's out. We can pull it free. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is just give this plate, get rid of all that old grease there. That's what's causing our sticking issue. So again, Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. And just clean up as much of the old grease as you can yeah so this grease is definitely in uh in worse shape than the last one i had pulled apart um that it's like super sticky uh, the last one was pretty tacky but the arm actually started and stopped within like a few seconds of hitting the start-stop switch on uh, this one the start part is basically completely frozen up and the stop was not very responsive either Okay, so I'm going to mop up all the alcohol and then put down some fresh grease. Okay, we'll take our bar here too and just clean 
whatever residual grease is on there. And then just give that a light, light coating of grease as well. So cleaning it. And then just gonna give it a little grease where it was previously grease. Okay. So now we'll wanna put this back in. Um, so I'm gonna hook the spring back up to it. So the spring kind of went around this little latch nub here. Okay, so that's in. And then we're gonna wanna line that T back up under here and drop it on through. Okay, so that's there. And now you can see how much easier it's it's sliding. Okay. We'll drop this piece back down. As so you can see how it's actually been able to be pulled back now. Okay, so we'll put that clip back on. And while we're under here, I'm just going to check to make sure everything else looks like it's moving freely and that nothing's just gummed up by old grease. So it looks like we're, we're okay. This was really the problem child down here. Okay, so we're going to roll this back over. Get the cord out of the way. Okay, and line it back up. Oops, sat it on top of that bar. I was too lazy to take out. So I'll sneak that under here. And it's back in. Okay, so we got that back in, so just gonna screw the motor plate back down.
Okay, and then our two long screws. Oops, off camera again, sorry about that. This way we're all misaligned. Let me try and find that. Find those screw holes there. There we go. Now it <clears throat> sounded sounded like it dropped right into place, so it should go right in. Yep, okay, uh, I left these a little loose just in case it needed adjustment, so go back and tighten these up. I think the center one I did pretty good, okay. Uh, now we go and replace these pieces here. Okay, so this one on the bottom I know. Um, and the reason why I like to take pictures is so I know how it all goes. So I'm just going to pause here for a second and review the photos. Okay, uh, more camera difficulties, uh, but now we got our star shaped piece here with the spring on the end. So that went here. And then the spring looped up and around this tab here. Get the C clip back on that or the E clip. Again, be careful when you're putting those on, you don't want them to go flying. Okay, now we're all kind of locked in. We gotta put the motor board, connect that back to the motor. So, line up the pins, again the pins here, to the pin holes here, and just line them up and press them in. Make sure the wires aren't going to get pinched or caught on anything. Did I miss a pin? Okay, so that's in. Now we can uh, re screw down motor here or motor board. other screws here. And the last two. Okay, now we have the one we took off so long ago here. So I did already grease it. So let's put that back on. 
And let me look at some photos so I can remember how that spring went on the end. Okay, I uh, consulted my photos so I know how this went back together. Remember the spring went in this hole here. That innermost hole for the piece. And then this slid back up. Okay, so we reviewed the pictures. So this goes on, post here. And the spring comes on over and loops around that tab right there. Okay, so that's moving freely. That's moving freely. Now, all that is left is to put our washer back on. And then the clip. And it looks like I forgot a washer on this screw, so I'm just going to put that back on real quick. Okay, so I believe that, oh, we still have our kind of shield plate, ground plate thing for the RCAs. Okay, so I don't see any more parts on my table, so I'm hoping we got everything back in there. Um, let's flip her over and just see uh, see if what we did worked. Okay, so we're going to want to reinstall the head shell. And we'll want to grab the platter. And finally, plug it in. Okay, I guess the uh, the linkage down below was in start mode, so that's why it started up as soon as we plugged it in. So let's just uh, put it back to rest and try it again here. Okay, so I'm just going to queue it up so we don't have to worry about the needle actually dropping on the platter. So start. Okay, so you can see it. our arm is uh, responsive now. Stop. So definitely a great improvement there. And look at that. We don't have that, uh, that repeat issue. It actually stopped. 
So, uh, try that again. I think I was on 10 inch before. I don't think it, or it doesn't make a difference, but I just want to double check. So, we are dropping at a pretty appropriate spot for 12. And repeat on zero. So we'll try that one more time. Okay, and uh, just to make sure we didn't muck anything up with the actual repeat functionality, let's just uh, do that memo repeat. And then that moved over one position. The switch is a little loose on the thing, I guess, but we'll do that again. I'll just walk it all the way down to zero, and then uh, hopefully we see it stop once it hits zero. Two. One. Okay, so this should be the last repeat here. Now we're on zero, so when I hit stop this time, it should just stop. Okay, and we look good. So uh, hopefully any of you that are having uh, similar issues uh, find this video helpful. Um, these are excellent turntables. Uh, it's just that the old grease inside sometimes uh, messes with operation. But once you get them running smooth with some fresh grease, they're pretty bulletproof. I uh, got a little more work left to do on this one. I'm going to you know, clean it up a little bit, clean the pots and speed switch and all that good stuff but uh this thing should be ready to rock thanks for watching and uh if you have any questions feel free to reach out